uh, your basic nuclear reactors and give you just some, some basic description of those reactor systems. There typically are three different reasons why somebody produces a nuclear reactor. The most common reason is to produce electricity or power. Uh, most reactors in the world, by far most reactors in the world, are of that type. Uh, there are also reactors that are produced for research purposes, uh, to, do, uh, to produce radiation that can be used uh, for research, as well as to produce medical isotopes and industrial isotopes. And then there are also reactors that are produced uh, for the production of plutonium uh, for nuclear weapons. Uh, and there are only a small number of those, but they do, of course, exist. Um, reactors generally break into two main categories, thermal reactors, and fast reactors. Uh, what is meant by that is that thermal reactors operate off of, pr principally operate off of neutrons that are um, moving slowly inside the system. Uh, fast reactors operate off of faster moving neutrons. In order to slow neutrons down, we use what's called a moderator. Um, the most common moderator used in the world is light water. So neutrons actually bounce off of the water in the reactor, and every time they bounce off the water, they lose energy and they slow down. Um, of the light water moderate reactors, there's principally two types, what's called the pressurized water reactor and the boiling water reactor. The pressurized water reactor, or PWR, is what we principally have here in the United States, um, though there are also boiling, wa or boiling water reactors in the United States as well. Um, the Russians also have a type of pressure water, re water reactor called a VVR, which is generally very similar to the U.S. Uh, PWR. Um, there are also uh, heavy water moderated versions of thermal reactors, which use heavy water, which is a, um, a type of water that contains deuterium uh, instead of regular hydrogen. And then deuterium actually has a mass about twice that of hydrogen. Uh, the most common kind of that is a, a kind of reactor that is called the can-do reactor, which is a Canadian-designed reactor uh, that uses a heavy water moderator and a natural uranium fuel. Uh, there are also thermal reactors that uh, use graphite as their moderator. Uh, in that case, they have a solid moderator of graphite, uh, and then they either have a gas coolant or a light water coolant uh, to cool the fuel. Of uh, the fast reactor types, there's really only one type that truly exists, which is the, the liquid metal type reactors. Uh, there have been a several liquid metal cooled reactors, EBR1 and EBR2 were ones in the United States, uh, Phoenix in France, and then Manju in uh, uh, Japan. And then, of course, the, the Russians also have a uh, uh, set of liquid metal cooled reactors called the, the BN series reactors. Uh, the gas cooled fast reactors is uh, a type that uh, has been designed but really hasn't seen uh, much in the way of production in the world. The BWR reactor, or boiling water reactor, is a very simple reactor type. In this case, the reactor uh, produces steam. That steam then drives a turbine. The steam then gets condensed in a condenser and pumped back up and throws the reactor. So the cycle for it, the, the, the thermodynamic loop for it, is very simple. Uh, this reactor operates off of a low pressure light, light water coolant. It has a low enriched uranium, or LEU, oxide fuel, and the coolant is just ordinary light water. The coolant itself serves really three purposes, two of which we've already talked about. It's, it's the coolant to cool the fuel and clad, so that keeps the fuel from melting. It's also the moderator that slows the neutrons down uh, so that they can then get absorbed in the fuel and cause fission. And then it's also the working fluid, which then spins the turbine and produces electricity. Um, these, this type of reactor, BWR reactors, have to use enriched uranium fuel. That's because the coolant that's used here, which is light water coolant, absorbs a lot of neutrons. It absorbs so many neutrons that you can't use natural uranium. You have to enrich the fuel. Uh, this is just internal structures of the reactor itself, where this area here is the actual fuel. The rest of this uh, is all control structures and then uh, areas that are used for the coolant system. The pressurized water reactor, or PWR reactor, which is probably the most uh, common reactor system in the world, is slightly more complicated. It actually has a dual loop structure um, where it has a primary loop and then a secondary loop. The primary loop is kept at a very high pressure, around 2200 uh, PSI. Um, it still uses a light water coolant uh, and it uses a low enriched uranium oxide fuel like the BWR. Uh, but this coolant, since it's at a higher pressure, this coolant does not boil. It stays as a liquid form the entire time. And then the uh, secondary loop is kept at a lower pressure, and that coolant then boils in this thing called a steam generator. Uh, and then that steam then is used to drive a turbine. The dual loop system uh, allows you to keep any radiation from contaminating the turbine. Um, there's no radioactive materials that will go over and contaminate the turbine because it's separated into these two separate loops. Uh, the PWR reactor also uses uh, a coolant that serves as the moderator, but that same coolant, uh, that same, uh, coolant for the fuel does not serve as the working fluid. Um, 
This reactor, since it uses a light water reactor, also has to use inert rich geranium fuel. And again, that's just a picture showing uh, the typical Westinghouse style uh, PWR reactor. Uh, this is the structures the, uh, of the uh, pressurized water reactor, um, which is the containment structure that you would expect to see. The reactor is the small little uh, uh, thing right there in the center. Uh, the large structures here are actually the steam generators for the reactor, and then a containment around the outside, which is there to provide um, uh, safety uh, so that if anything bad happened inside the reactor, that this would all get contained inside of this large uh, concrete and steel structure. Uh, also shown here in this other building is the spent fuel pool, uh, where um, spent fuel from the reactor is stored in a separate building outside of containment. Another type of reactor that we see in the world is the CANDU reactor. The CANDU reactor was designed by the Canadians. Um, it's based, again, on a dual-loop Rankine cycle, similar in many ways to a PWR. Uh, the coolant itself is a either light water or heavy water coolant uh, that flows through a set of pressure tubes in the center of the reactor. So what's shown here is each of these little tubes here is a pressure tube running through the core, and each tube is a, an individual tube. Inside of that tube, then, is a natural uranium fuel, usually in oxide uh, form, but it uh, technically could be metallic form as well. Um, and then in this larger tank around the outside is this uh, heavy water moderator, uh, which is kept at a fairly low pressure. Uh, and the heavy water moderator then serves to moderate the neutrons. Um, like I said, the system is in a dual loop system. So this is your primary loop here. And then that primary loop then produces steam in a steam generator, which goes through a secondary loop, including flow through a turbine to produce electricity. Um, so in that, case, that respect, it's fairly similar to a PWR. One difference, though, you see is that this reactor is actually on its side. Uh, the PWR reactor, the cylinder was up and down. In this case, the cylinder is, is on its side, and the water flows through the reactor uh, sideways.